Hi, Madam Eileen here. Happy New Year's! I'm going to do a tutorial today on how I make my mini boomers. This is my mini boomer. We have an 11 inch balloon with confetti and balloons inside on a flower base and then a candy cup. I'm going to show you everything from the very beginning. I like to start with a 16 ounce cup and I have a dome lid. Now before you purchase it, you need to make sure that the lid will fit the cup. Just because it's the lid says it fits any 16 inch cup, doesn't mean that the 16 inch cup will snap closed on the lid. So you wanna make sure you hear a snap, push it around and then give it a tug. And then you know that this cup will work for you. Now I change my candy cups. If you're a kid, you're gonna get more candies and cookies. If you're an adult, you'll get more chocolates and treats. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to put in the adult cups. Now the candy assortment will always change. It's never going to be the same, but you can be guaranteed it's not going to be the cheap stuff from the dollar store. For example, what adult does not like mini Oreos? So I have mini Oreos. Now when you put your items into the cup, you want to keep an eye out for how to pack it in. You don't want a lot of empty spaces, but you also want good color showing on the outside of the cup. I'm just going to show you the rest of these. In this cup, I have some Rolos, some Milky Ways, some Dove Chocolates, a Kit Kat, Three Musketeer, Butterfinger, Twix, some Andy Mints, a Ring Pop for fun, and some sparkly hard candies. I like to put hard candies on the bottom of the cup just because hard candies tend to be heavier than the other chocolate candies. If you do have a favorite candy, let me know. I'll see if I can put some of your favorite candies in the cup. So I'm gonna get the cup. I'd like to start with the cookies. I flatten the bag out and I slide the cookies so they're pressing against the side. And then I'll take the little candies. I'll drop the little candies into the cup. The hard candies, that is. Also, it's a good splash of color, so I might want to put one here on the front. Fill up that base really nice. I like purple. That's what we have so far. Now I'm going to put the green top here on the side. So you can see, just looking, turning it, you can see I have green pop Oreos. Butterfinger, nice splash of yellow. I'm going to put my Kit Kat next. And then Twix, long and narrow. I'm going to put my Milky Way here in the center. Right now I'm kind of created kind of a nest. Now, um, candy cups can either accommodate a round balloon, so I could stop there, but I don't want to disappoint you. I want to make sure you get a good hole. So I might take some Rolos, a splash of gold, kind of tuck them in on the side, so when you get your cup, you can see that there's some gold there, some green, candy mints, just making sure that there's splashes of color. I like to, if I can, Dove chocolates, I like to put those in. Put some more Rolos in, I still have room. Let's fit two more Andy Mints in. Yeah. And let's see if we can put any room in here for the Milky Ways. I can fit one Milky Way in here. Two Milky Ways. You don't want to cram it. If you have a candy that has a soft center like Milky Ways, you don't want to pack it too hard. You don't want them to open the candy and have crushed candy or crushed cookies. Okay. As you see, it's a little overflowing. Okay, maybe we won't have that piece. That one fell on the floor. So we're not going to put that one in here. The next step 
Now that you have your lid, you want to take a balloon, a five inch, a five inch balloon. Now the balloons I like to use are Qualitex. Qualitex is the best balloons. They were originally Pioneer Company and they've been doing balloons for a hundred years. So they know a lot. And all the latex that they use comes from rubber trees. It's all natural. You want to take your five inch balloon, inflate it, not all the way, halfway. Then while pinching the neck, grab it through the lid and pull it up like that. And now I'm going to push down on the candy cup while letting air out of the balloon. I'm going to adjust the camera just a little bit down here. All right, a little bit more. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to push down on the balloon while letting air out at the top. Until the edges of the cup click down. If I think I've lost too much air because I have too much candy in here, I can take a balloon inflator, a balloon pump, and re-add air or go back and take some candy out. And looks like I need to take some candy out. I went too crazy on the candy. All right, so let's take some candy pieces out. Dove, dove staying in. If anything, I'm just gonna take out just those Milky Ways. Okay, I've taken out Milky Ways, taking my five inch balloon, any color. Right now I want to use up my quartz purple. Any Qualtex balloon that says quartz is usually a clear see-through balloon. And we do it again, we let the air out while pushing down on the lid until we hear it click. And now you can see, just taking out three candies allowed that the balloon to fill the whole entire dome. Now that makes a really good candy cup. Now we're gonna do the flower. We're gonna do a two-toned flower. I'm gonna take a chrome gold Qualitex and a black. These are two sixties. And I am going to reach over. I'm gonna use my electric inflator. Electric inflators let you do things fast. I like to use the Legenda Generation 1. That's my favorite model. I don't care for the newer models that have flat buttons. I like raised buttons. So mod Generation 1 has raised buttons. Since we're going to use just a little bit of each, you only want to inflate it halfway. And then we're going to tie them together. I go crisscross. Grabbing the nozzles, I pull the nozzles, gold one to the top, black one to the bottom, and then I pull the black one to the top again. And then I crisscross and put one knot under my fingers through that loop. Basically, it's a shoe, basically, I'm just tying a shoe lace knot. So there you go, over, under. Now, you don't need to make these loops big. After all, we only want the loops to just go past the edge of the candy cup. So let's see, even that is too big of a loop. Make it a little smaller. That one's much better. From the knot, if I lay down one, two, three, four fingers, that is a four finger loop. If I pinch it right here and twist one, two, three, I need to make uh, some more loops. It's easiest to do three in the gold and three in the black but I try to push my talents by trying to do four in the gold and four in the black. It kind of alternates it. Doing the different colors on the flower petal base really adds a lot of fun interest. So I want to pick up this paste just a little bit. Now you might want to try your best to get all these loops the same size, but even if they're a little bit off, I can show you a fun trick that I learned. Okay, so those are four loops. Now I'm giving it a squeeze before I bend it over my thumb. Okay, so I put my thumb here and I bend it over and then I size it between this loop and this loop. 
once I get it where I want it, I pinch to the center, twist down, and I pinch and roll. I pinch and roll, pinch, pinch down and roll, and cause it to go around, and there's our first black in between the gold. One reason why you squeeze it is it gets some of the air out and it creates a soft bubble. The more pe petals or loops that you make on your flower base, the softer the petals need to be so they can squish together. Now that one turned out a bit too tall. So I back out, pinch it a little shorter, pull it back to the center, push it in, and I pinch it and roll it. Pinch and roll, pinch and roll, pinch and roll. When I say roll, I'm pinching it and then I'm twisting the balloon. That's the rolling part. I'm rolling the black balloon around. I now have two black petals. Now we're going to do three. I line it up between two gold petals. Then I bend the black balloon to the size I want. So you don't want too big but you don't want too small. You try to get it so it curves nice and around. And even when you're careful, it's still a little off a little bit. Some people are really good at this. Me, I just have fun. Actually, that almost is too small. There we go. I'm gonna, push my, I'm gonna hold my thumb into the center and then I'm gonna do the pinch and roll. When working with black, black tends to be the thinnest of all the balloons. And so my fingers are a little scared to work with it sometimes. So that's also why I pinch first and then I roll it. Because when you pinch the balloon, when you squeeze the balloon, it makes the balloon soft. And soft balloons don't pop as often on you. But you can see how it's starting to come along really nicely and checkered. We just need one more black loop. So let's get this black. I squeeze the black, roll it into place, and let go. Now I fold it in. Judge how big I want that loop. Pinch, roll. Pinch it, roll it. Pinch and roll. The reason why you want to roll is if you just pinch and pull, the pulling creates friction. Friction will pop your balloon. So, pinch and roll. I'm looking at my loops. One seems loose. If your balloon seems a little loose, one way to tighten it up is to grab it and turn it and it crisscrosses in the center and pulls tighter. And I got it. I don't need the black anymore, so I'm going to pop it. I'm going to pop it by closing one end while on the other end rips down and then pinches closed. I save this for a future project. Now you don't need to tie knots with latex balloons. Latex likes to hold to itself. What you do need to do is wrap it around enough times and twist it so it holds itself closed. So to help save friction, I'm pulling these loops apart and then pulling it down around. And then I pull the loops apart and pull it up. Pull the loops apart, pull it down through there. And now I'm going to straighten this up by pulling the gold loop apart from the black. And then I make sure that the bottom of the loop and the top of the loop match together. And I'm going to go around. Now here's gold and here's black. Pull the gold up. There's a black. There's a gold. There's a black and gold. Lie it down. Black and gold. Black and gold. Black and gold. There we go. And if you look this way, you'll see that some of them are larger and some of them are smaller. But as someone once said, a wonderful balloon person, he says, no one looks at the back of your balloon project. They all look at the front. So anything that's mismatched, Put it towards the back. No one will see it. No one will care. They'll just be amazed that you even made it. So 
Also, I heard that if there is a balloon that's large and out of place on one side, manipulate it closer to the balloons of similar size so all the small ones are on one side and all the big ones are on the back. That is also another way to blend and hide that your loops are not the same size. All right, well, this is where we're going to stop here. Break that off. Carefully join this up and down once or twice. Up, down, up, down. And now I'm going to put this on my candy cup. You want to usually grab the knot. Hold the knot up. Sometimes you have to give it a hug. I'm going to pull it up and to the center of my candy cup round balloon. So now here it's at the very top. And now I'm going to rest it on my knee and pull it down and then wrap it around. You really don't need a lot to hold the flower base onto the candy cup. Now we're ready to do the boomer. Okay, so this is the fun part. If you have an electric inflator, it makes your life a lot easier. But if you only have a hand pump, it's still possible. So again, I like to use Qualitex balloons. Here it is, Qualitex, 100% natural latex. And this is their special New Year's print balloon. They say Happy New Year's on it. The first thing you want to do with this is you want to inflate it all the way. You want to stretch your balloons. So inflate up. Now I have a filbert pump. It's a large version of this, but it sits on the floor and you go up with the pull and down and it blows air into your balloon. Once it's inflated and stretched, that's as big as it can get. Once you have it stuffed, it, you don't want to fill it all the way full. You don't want it to pop prematurely. Now this is where we get our confetti. You can put the confetti on the edge of a table, stretch the balloon open, and then use your fingers to push the confetti in or get your friend or your helpful child to put the confetti in for you. The confetti is the one thing that I forgot to get ready for this video. I have silver confetti and I have a little bit of gold confetti. This is the last little bit of confetti in here. I'm going to stand up and look to see if I have my balloon opener. There it is! Yay! They were not too far from my workstation. I tend to move things around as I move around. Okay. Now, this is a wonderful, helpful tool for opening balloons. Official balloon opening equipment can be quite pricey. This is uh, not intended originally for balloons, but I find it very helpful. I got this tool from a um, Feedstock Supply Store. It's a goat castrator. But it works at opening balloons up. It opens it up so you can get a good pinch of confetti in here. Now this is Mylar confetti. I use it sparingly. It's not, this is the only stuff that I use that's really not biodegradable, but I use it very sparingly. I gave two big pinches of glitter into there. And now I want to try to get, I'm going to close this, set that down. I need to get the scissors and get that last little bit of confetti out of the bottom. My little confetti is the best for the inside of balloons. It comes in different sizes. I couldn't find my one inch confetti, but I believe this is my half inch and a three eighths inch confetti. So there we go. I 
I'm getting the confetti out of my bag and I'm putting it down here on my workstation. But you can't see. I don't want to close my laptop too much. I don't want it to go to sleep. Mylar confetti is attracted by static electricity. So before working with it, you might want to spray your hands over your work area with um, static guard to uh, get rid of some static to keep the confetti from wanting to travel elsewhere. And I just got more. Every drop of confetti counts, especially when it's gold. <laughs> I'm not giving this balloon to anyone, so uh, you just let me do it. If you don't want to lick your fingers, you can use a spray bottle. But I got, oh, there we go. I finally got the confetti off. Okay. Yeah, that finally worked. Okay. Take your castrator, slip it into the nozzle of the balloon, pull the nozzle of the balloon, gather it up, gather it up, gather it up until the neck of the balloon is all gathered up and your, the prongs are here in the open ball end of the balloon. Now we're gonna give it a squeeze and it opens up. Now I'm gonna hold it just underneath the edge of my table and pull the gold confetti in. Now if only putting the balloons in was that easy, that's the trick. All right. Now it's it's okay to put five balloons in, but I'm going to try to put 12 in. So far, I've been lucky, and I've done only um, 10, but we're doing 12. What you want to do is you want to pre-inflate these. So we're going to get, oh, if you don't have your electric, you can just inflate like this. One, two, three, four. You're only known to inflate some of them four pops. Some of them three pumps and some of them two pumps. You want balloons of different sizes so more balloons come out of this balloon. If they were all four inches and big, you can't fit that many into an 11 inch balloon and you want to go bigger. So you inflate it and deflate it just like that. I am going to pre inflate it. This makes it easier to inflate the balloon inside the balloon. And often your balloon will not be see You won't be able to see. Oh, see the down balloon? We got an emoji balloon in this one. I just had to report my two color. But this is really good if you're doing a baby shower or baby reveal. For a sweet 16. You could even put dollar bills inside of the little balloons. So you can have a lot of fun with the, um, the balloon opener that I have. All right, now that I've inflated and deflated those balloons, we can get to having fun. You want to get a straw? I use a balloon maxi stick and I'm going to slide my first balloon on. I'm going to take my 11 inch balloon full of confetti and I'm going to inflate it. We're going to inflate it to almost all the way. As we stick this balloon in, we're going to lose air. That's almost. Okay, now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to push this stick into the nozzle, past my fingers, and into the balloon. You see the stick pushing out right there? That's where the balloon is. I'm going to continue pushing it up until the nozzle just disappears, and then while pinching hard, I'm going to pull the stick out. So you can see the nozzle. Now, you take your inflation device, put it into the nozzle of the small balloon while still trying to pinch the air tight around the big balloon. Did you hear that hiss? You will have air leave this balloon. 
that's why you fill it up with air beforehand. Now, I like to do the big balloons first. And when you try to inflate and it's hard, that means something's twisted. So I'm going to pull, tug up. One, two, three, four, five. I'll do five. And you can just see the blue balloon through the sides of the big balloon. I'm pinching and I'm turning it upside down and I'm fishing out that little nozzle. Pull that nozzle up to the top and air stops coming out because that blue balloon is actually blocking and plugging that hole. I go around my fingers, remove my middle finger from the loop and pull it through and create a knot. Now, when these balloons explode, I want them to look neat and clean. So at this point, I cut the nozzle off. I grab the main nozzle of the big balloon, give it a tug. And my blue balloon just deflated inside the big balloon. I don't know why. Maybe I didn't tie a good enough knot. But we got to do this a whole bunch more times. I'm going to do white. Now, sometimes when you're holding this, give a little pin, a twist, twist the balloon, and then pinch it. And you'll find that the air stays in the balloon a lot better. So here we go. Onto the stick. Free up the balloon so that the knot that you're, it's, you're pinching flat, there's no twist. Now, I took the twist out. I'm going to push the stick in. So there's the stick, there's the balloon. Pull the stick out. Now here at the nozzle, the balloon's the softest so you can give a little tug just to make sure that that five inch balloon is in all the way. It's okay that air escapes. Giving a tug, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna stop at four on this one. Pinch both of the balloons through like that. Reach in and get the nozzle, pull it towards me. No air is coming out because now that white balloon is causing a jam to plug the hole. Okay, making sure that I can feel that knot. Give a little snip, cut that tip off. Throw this little piece in the trash and it will decompose in a few years. The Pioneer Balloon Company has been around 100 years and they know after 100 years, any balloons are, they're gone, they're decomposed. You cannot find petrified balloons that are older than 100 or even 50 years. Okay, anyways, we are stuffing balloons. Setting my scissors aside, we're going to go for orange. So you see, it is possible to stuff balloons. Now, if you don't have a maxi stick, you could use a straw. You could use a doll rod. Anything that's thin and not too sharp on the end will work. I've even heard some people use coffee stirrer rods. And I'm going to do slide the orange on. One, two, three, four. Now, the more air that escapes, I will at one point need to put some more air into this 11 inch balloon. So I think I can do a few more. I'm going to go to my electric inflator and show you how I do it with that. The more of these that you do, the better you'll get. But it is a very good workout for your fingers. Your hand will get tired. When your hand gets tired, I'll show you a trick. You twist the balloon. Say you have to go to the restroom. Potty break. You give a few twists to this balloon and then you take a clamp and then you can clamp that twist. Ta-da! I've let go. I've given my cramping hands a rest. 
that's what I would do in the middle of a project and I had to go elsewhere because I don't, it seems a waste of effort to put all the air into the balloon, not to be able to take any air out, well, to let it all out just to take a break. But also getting little clamps like this work every day, do your finger exercises, open and close, try to close it with just one finger. If you need to use two fingers, do that. But this is a great tool to use for exercising and making hands stronger, fingers stronger in order to do this. And this is one reason why you want to pay a professional. We've spent time training our fingers, strengthening our fingers to do this a lot. Not everyone can tie a balloon. Shocking. Uh, but no, not many people can keep up balloon twisting for hours on end. Okay, so balloons on the stick. I, <laughs> I slide it in really quickly until the nozzles are even. And then I pinch tighter and pull the stick. And then if I need to make sure that the balloon is up the neck, I give a little tug. And... I, I can feel, I can feel the nozzle of the little balloon inside the big balloon. So I don't need to lay eyes on lining it up. I just have to feel for the nozzle, slide the balloon onto my inflator. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I judged the pulses of my machine. Now, sometimes it might get hard because the neck stretches and it gets harder to reach and get the neck of the little balloon. Tie it. Trim it. Pinch it. Now, you don't have to make sure that that balloon has left the neck because you're going to poke it out of the way when you insert your next balloon. There you go, you heard that hiss of air. Lining up, I feel. I blew that one up eight pulses. So when you inflate using your hand pump, you can count the numbers of pumps. Out for one, in for two. Out for three, in for four. And so even if you can't see the balloon inside, you do have some idea of how big one pump and two pumps makes your little small balloons. Having an electric pump helps increase your speed on how many of these you can do in an hour. If I was not teaching how to do this balloon, I can stuff 10 of these five inch balloons into this 11 inch balloon in about 15 minutes. To make the whole candy cup, we're looking at 20, 25 minutes. 30 minutes if I'm getting picky at what candy I put in to my balloon. Let's tie a knot. Now, is it possible to put the balloon in and inflate it without pre-inflating pre it? Yes, but it might be a little difficult. Now I'm looking at my balloons and I'm feeling around and I'm not feeling a lot of room. I might though be able to get away with just doing one more balloon before I have to put more air into my 11 inch. Slide my five inch on the balloon. Push my maxi stick in. Yeah, it's, it's getting tight. Pull it out. Slide that on there. The side is bulging as I'm inflating the pink balloon. So yeah, this is the last one I'll be able to put in for now until I put more air into my 11 inch balloon. Snip. I'm going to put the nozzle back here on my large inflator. There we go. 
for my angle, when you hold it against the light, you can see through it rather than the glare of the light on the balloon. I'm checking it for how much air is in the balloons. And you can manipulate it a little bit. All right. On with the inflation. I want to do my emoji balloon next. Slide it in. Pull the stick out. Put this down. I think I'm getting bold and making my five inches a lot bigger than I used to. The more you do this, the more comfortable you'll get. Now these latex balloons, because they are natural, you need to treat them as if you were dealing with uh, something that's natural, like a fruit or a vegetable. If you keep it out in the heat out of the fridge, it will slowly wilt as it warms up. You keep your fruits and vegetables fresh by uh, getting them away from the sunlight, putting them in the fridge where they're cool and they're dark, and because of the cold air, it has less oxygen. So those are all things you need in order to start decomposition. You need moisture, light, heat. So keep balloons cold, keep them away from the sun, and they'll actually stay shiny longer. So if you're pre-making these, you want to put them in a dark plastic bag and put it somewhere cool, your closet, or if you live somewhere cold, your garage will work, just as somewhere that sunlight or indirect light can't be on them. Okay. And a fun fact, if you make a balloon and you put it in a bag and then you put the bag in your fridge, the balloon will stay super fresh for two or three weeks. <coughs> that was really fun. But what's really mind blowing is if you put it in your deep freeze, Take your balloon, put it in a bag, put it in your freezer, and it can be good for up to six months. Aha. I think this was balloon number nine. I forget if it was eight or nine. I lost count. But you probably can watch the video and count. Ah, she's only up to eight. But anyways, I don't know. But anyways. Have fun. As your balloon gets full, don't put so much air in the little balloon. I've been really pushing the boundaries by making this as large as possible. Okay, we're gonna put the stick on here. I'm losing a lot of air. Okay, got that on. This is a black balloon. Now, for New Year's Eve, I could have got a whole bunch of silver and gold balloons. So I'll have just a flow of silver and gold come out. But I was thinking more of a miniature balloon drop. And balloon drops are all kinds of colors of balloons. Some are even different shapes and sizes. But for a balloon this small, <laughs> small, yeah, an 11 inch balloon is one of the smaller decorating balloons out there. They do sell a nine inch, but those are not so common to come by. Now the balloon looks distorted, not perfectly round. That's for the pressure of the little balloons inside. So I'm slowly adding air and I'm squishing down on the top. The squishiness tells me how much more I could put in this balloon. And I think it's about reach its maximum. I'm going to push on the balloons and see if the balloons inside move around and the balloons inside are not moving around. That tells me I have put the maximum amount of balloons in here. Now, the smaller you make the balloons, the more balloons you can put into it. Uh, as you saw, I was putting them quite sizable, about four inches. So now I want to pull the nozzle. So this is as tight to the balloon as I can. I go around three fingers. I remove the third finger and then I tuck the nozzle through the hole in the loop. Then I remove my other fingers and now it's tight. I can make it just a little tighter if I hold the knot and pull that knot to kind of actually roll and travel closer to the balloon, making it tighter and gives me more nozzle to work with. To attach 
<laughs> I hit my button. Okay, now I'm going to attach this balloon to this flower base. I do that by putting my finger just above the nozzle, push down to the center of the flower, pull the nozzle between the loops on one side to the back, pull it up between the loops, and then I go back down in the front, and then I just give a pull and let go, and it's there. It's not in the dead center, so that's where I manipulate it. I push, pull, and tug, and there we go. We have a mini boomer. Now, where is my lethal weapon of destruction? Okay. Now, I'm Mrs. Smith, the silly balloon mom also known as Madam Eileen. I am a mother of four children. My oldest is 16, a teenager. And my husband, Samuel, he is sitting across from me. Do you wanna do a slow-mo video? We are gonna do popping. Oh yeah. We're on the count of three. Face it to you. Oh, now one thing you need to know. Balloons are a choking hazard. It's not the popped pieces on the floor that are dangerous. It is the balloon popping near your mouth while you inhale at the same time. It's a really freak accident. I don't want anyone to get injured on this. So when you pop the balloon, you don't want to go, <gasps> okay? Go Happy New Year! And don't breathe and then just pop the balloon. All right, are we ready? Three, two, one, Happy New Year! Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? Well, have fun making your own mini boomers. I'll see you next New Year's.